Get ready, get ready for this pipe and hot tea. Get ready, get ready for a tea time and filter with your girl loving tea. Spilling all this hot tea on this podcast street. So get ready, get ready for this pipe and hot tea. From tea time and filter with your girl loving tea. Hey, tea sippers. I hope you guys are doing good today. January is going by so fast. I can't believe it's almost the end of the month. Anyways, welcome once again to Tea Time Unfiltered. And just a quick reminder, if you guys want to watch this full podcast in video form, just go on to Spotify, just pull up your Spotify app, and you'll be able to watch the full video. Otherwise, half of it will be posted on YouTube and the rest will be posted over there. So today I have Emily, my co-host with me, and we're here to spill some tea on all types of stuff that's been going on this past week. So yes. Emily, how are you doing today? I'm good. It's real rainy over here in the Memphis area. So I don't know if you can hear it in the background or not, but it's the the weather's very wonky, as uh, I think you said in one of your last videos. It's really wonky here, too. Yeah, we've been getting snow. It didn't snow today, um, but that's all we've been dealing with. No rain, really, just snow, but... I'm so ready for spring and summer to get here. But speaking of spring and summer, interesting, interestingly enough, Doja Cat and Kylie Jenner decided to, I guess, bless the internet, honey, with mm-hmm. their spring and summer fashions. So if you guys do not know, uh, Doja Cat and Kylie Jenner were both the talk of the town at Paris Week in at Paris Fashion Week, um, they went to Paris, France, and they were in the Shy Pirelli Hot Couture Spring Summer Show, and they caused a lot of controversy. So, so let's talk about Doja Cat first, okay? Okay. <laughs> so Doja Cat literally had her team put 30,000 hand-applied Swarovski crystals all over her hands, mm. face, calves, I have the video of them putting it on her. This is insane. I don't know how long it took, but everybody's talking about this. I want y'all to watch this really quick. So you just saw that. What did you think of them single-handedly applying all of those crystals to her body? That was crazy. You know, I definitely admire the the artistry behind it, the detail, all of that. Um, I, the patience, like they definitely, I you know, I know it's a little off-putting. And when you first look at it, it's like, okay, that's kind of weird looking. But it is, I, I will say it is cool. Like it, it does look really cool, I guess, in a couture. Where I'm not really a fashion person like that. So yeah, looking when you first see it, it is kind of like, oh, wow. But I think that was probably the statement they were going for. So I, I, I put respect on the detail that they put into it because I, I didn't see anybody on the runway that looked like Doja. She's a no. very unique when it comes to style and what have you. Yeah, definitely. I mean, even all of her parties and stuff that she's been having these past few months, she's looked very different, especially after she shaved her eyebrows. To me, I think it was pretty cool. I liked the concept. It was different, but I'm sorry. I was getting Marvel's Vision vibes. If you guys remember Vision from Marvel, the all red character, that's the vibe that she was giving me. 
I find it interesting that red was the color that they went with. I mean, I think that would have looked really cool in like a gold or silver. So, you know, who am I though? So red is very abrasive. Um, but yes, I definitely got the vision tees too. Yeah, no, definitely. And I think they probably chose red because, you know, we've seen people dipped in like silver paint, gold paint and all that stuff. So yeah, that's, that's right. why. But for me, as I'm looking at it, I'm like, I wonder how long that really took. Because I couldn't imagine sitting there for hours while they put on stone after stone after stone. And then imagine having to use the bathroom and her hands are dipped in red. You know, they have all this Swarovski on them. Did somebody help her wipe? Like, I'm just saying. Well, I remember um, a makeup artist uh, years ago decided to do like a, a vlog or something where they contoured them their face with glitter. And when they went to wash their face off, you know, glitter's kind of sim I'm not going to say it's like glass, but it's not good. So when they wash their face, it was like they cut their face up and it just destroyed mm. their skin. So, I mean, I'm sure these are professionals. So maybe they did something to prep her skin. But I, I wonder what type of impact it had just on the overall, like her health. And the, I mean, the time and the detail they put in there is insanity. Yeah, because it was 30000 So imagine them once they had to take it off. I'm sure they dipped her in oil, you know. Um, hey, that's dedication. But yeah, yeah. I, want, how, how does she, I don't know how she used the bathroom or, you know, probably someone probably did wipe her ass for her. <laughs> <laughs> Something. Because you know I you can't lose surprised. a crystal because as soon as it comes off, you're going to see her, her white skin underneath. You know what I mean? So yeah. it's, like, it's going to show. I mean, I don't care what skin tone she is, but it's not going to be red. So that's what I'm saying. Like. It's right. gonna be like, oh, you're missing a diamond. I mean, a, a crystal right here, yeah. right here, right here. So think I'm about gonna... when you get your nails done and you get, you mm -hmm. know, the, the bling on it and one falls off and you're like, ah, damn it. It threw the whole look off. <laughs> exactly. So, yeah, I wonder how long she kept that on. And then imagine being in the shower because I'm sure they have to, like, just put a bunch of oil on her to get, you know, to help release the glue. And yeah. then imagine, like, all these crystals at the bottom of the bathtub. That plumbing bill is going to be high. Child, the thing is <laughs> fashion, honey. So now yes. that was Doja Cat, another person who was making waves on the well, she wasn't on the runway, honey, but she came in looking like King Jaffe Jaffa himself. She was giving Leo in her. She was definitely giving me come into America vibes. Now, everybody knows I'm a Leo, I'm Team Leo. So, you know, I'm always here for anything lion and lioness related. Um, a lot of people were complaining for some strange reason. People thought it was real. Like it looks know? extremely real. I, I know yes. they say it's not, but it does look very real as it should. Right. That's you know, true. I think it would That's look true. bad if it looked like something <laughs> yeah. from Party City, right? So, yeah. yeah, it should look real. But I mean, there were a lot of people like, Carl oh, Peter, this is ridiculous. I can't believe she poached the lion off. for, um, you know, just for aesthetic reasons. It's like, bro, calm down. It's foam. It, it's not a real lion. So let's make that clear. Because, you know, as a, as a Leo, we don't play about folks killing lions. OK, That's but. Right. What was so funny is that you couldn't tell Kylie nothing, honey. When she got there, she thought she ate. I feel like they set her up. Because if y'all don't know, when Kylie showed up, she was the only one there at the time in her little lion outfit. So all eyes were on Kylie. Then they sit her down in the front right next to Doja. So you know everybody mm -hmm. watching the two of them because they look so unique. Right. All of a sudden, one of the models starts walking down the runway. And her name is Irene Shayek. And she has on the same exact outfit, damn near as Kylie. She's wearing all black and she has a lion head too. And when you look at Kylie's face, it's so funny because the camera just, they're so shady in Hollywood. They the are. camera zooms into her face and she's looking like, what the fuck? <laughs> yeah, she was big mad. <laughs> she, was she was big, big mad. mad. So I'm going to go ahead and show y'all this. Y'all got to see this video of them zooming into her face. First, I'm going to show y'all her walking in. It's it's like incredibly funny because you can't tell her nothing when she walks in. She's like, I am Kylie. Yes. <laughs> Ooh. <laughs> Damn. She was not here for it. And look how they were shadily zooming into her face. Yeah, they, they did a close-up. 
she's trying to bob her head like she's not embarrassed that they're wearing the same exact unique lion dress. Yeah, I know there was, because um, I had looked into it, uh, there was other pieces that did have like these big fake animal heads on it. And mm-hmm. um, now I wasn't, so I'm like a huge animal nerd when it comes to anything like animal documentaries. I love watching like Net Geo Wild and uh, Our Planet and it, any any type of animal documentaries. I love watching stuff like that. And ironically, recently I have gotten into lions and they are just such a really really cool unique group of like the big cats or whatever mm-hmm. and the way that their um social constructs and all that are is is very interesting so i've just like for the past couple of weeks fell down this rabbit hole and i will say when i saw her dress i didn't i don't like it and i know it's fake and i know it's supposed to you know it is supposed to look real they don't want a raggedy line on there so i get it but i don't like um the whole idea because they're I think what a lot of people's argument is, is by her being such a big influencer, to me, what it looked like was that someone shot a lion and, you know, did some type of taxidermy and then put it on their dress. And Mm. so I think a lot of people's argument is this is encouraging poaching. This is animals shouldn't be used as accessories, Um, which, you know, everybody's owned a leather handbag before. Everybody's, you know, at, at some point in time, we've all used makeup that isn't cruelty free i'm not a vegan myself so i'm not acting like higher than thou or whatever but Mm -hmm. i i don't like the dresses um and i know it's not just her dress and i know it's like kind of a a throwback to an older style that they had but i really don't like these dresses with these big animal heads on it it looks weird it's so realistic it does look like a, a real lion head and it just it's creepy to me and there's also lots and lots not to get too deep but there's lots of symbolisms behind lions mm-hmm. and a lot of religions. There's a lot of symbolism behind lions. So I found it really dark. And I know the argument could be said Doja Cats is dark too. And I mean, yeah, they both can. I, fashion as a whole can be, has a very dark twist to it. You know, we've had these discussions before, but I really, really do not like her dress. <laughs> All that to yeah, say, I don't like her dress. Saying that. Mm-hmm. I ain't feeling it. I don't like it. Now, um, Naomi Campbell, who else was it? It was three of them that had the main dresses, Shalom Harlow and then Irena uh, Shayek. And Naomi had like a black wolf. And then um, Shalom had on like this white leopard, um, like snow leopard dress with the head. Mm -hmm. Um, So, yeah, it's very, very interesting how they chose that. But, yeah, a lot of people were really mad. People were saying online, um, they were leaving comments saying that this is promoting wildlife hunting. Uh, okay, somebody else was saying, sorry, but humans wearing animal heads will never be subversive in any context. So even though they were artificial, I can definitely understand why people feel that way. Just for the fact that they look, one, very real. Mm-hmm. And they do look like something that was taxidermied and hanging up on the wall. Yeah, I- I'm not a big fan. And. You know, like I said, I know it's kind of, or not kind of, it is hypocritical for me to be like, oh, animals aren't accessories. But I mean, a lot of people do that. They buy dogs as accessories. They're, you know, we've all had leather handbags, (laughs) you know, the big fur coats. And, you know, at some point in time, humanity had to kill animals and skin them to survive for blankets, for coats during cold winters and things like that. So I understand that. But in the day and age we live now, I just don't like this whole idea of these wolves and these snow leopards and these lions, which uh, a lot of them, it, it kind of goes in and out. So uh, are endangered animals. Snow leopards are very, very rare. Uh, lions, they're, they're always kind of pushing it. Um, I think wolves are kind of back, uh, bouncing back. So don't quote me. But yeah, it's very interesting the, the animals they pick because they all have a lot of symbolism behind each one of those animals. Yeah, it does. You don't, you don't see a meerkat, you know, or a mongoose or any of that. It's all, you know, symbolic animals that they have on their their outfits. So those are not my favorite looks, I guess. Take the animal head off, and I guess it's a cute dress. But couture is always kind of weird anyways. Mm-hmm. Now, what's very interesting as well is um, in the Bible, 1 Peter 5-8, through 8, one of the quotes that people were quoting was, be sober minded, be watchful. Your adversary, the devil, prowls around like a roaring lion, 
mm-hmm. see someone to devour. And remember, yeah. a lot of people said that Doja Cat looked like a devil. She looked like Hellboy. And then yeah. you have Kylie Jenner coming in like a roaring lion prowling. Thank you. Amazing. Mm-hmm. Wow. And you, mm-hmm. even in uh, Revelations, there's a lot of symbolism about lions. And then how many times have you been scrolling maybe on like Instagram or just any site and you see, you know, it's like a Bible app or something and it's going to be mm-hmm. a big lion on, you know, the the advertisement. So there's yeah. there's lots of uh, symbolism with the lions biblically for sure. And uh, I could be wrong on this, but I want to say wolves, too, and uh, mm. other religions as well. Yeah, no. Yeah, there's definitely a lot of symbology. Anything in fashion, I I always look at fashion deeper. You have to, because they're always sneaking little symbols in there. I mean, mm-hmm. look at the whole Balenciaga drama. Oh, you yeah. Know, on all the symbolism that was in there. Like, if you're not into the whole underground sex world with Gimp Mask, it's going to go over your head. So, yeah, I definitely believe that there was a little bit more to the fashion show. While I can, you know, respect the fashion and you know, respect the outfits for the most part and the time that it took to create them. I definitely feel like there's them. I definitely feel like there's some symbolism in there somewhere. Oh yeah. Cause I mean the, those animals were extreme, the very, very realistic looking. So they definitely put a lot of time and effort into that. But I did think it was also a side note. This has nothing to do, but you know, uh, Doge is a Libra and, and I think Kylie's a Leo. Yeah, so that could have been Leo. Okay, so Kylie's your fellow Leo, and uh, mm-hmm. Doge is my fellow Libra. So you know, shout out to the Leos and Libras in the front row. <laughs> but <Okay>. uh, <laughs> that's right. <laughs> but um, yeah, I mean, it, it it is definitely very interesting the way that fashion is evolving and things like that. But I think a lot of people get very touchy when it comes to um, animals and things like that. So I felt like that was very risky, but also strategic putting that in there because they had to know they were going to get some backlash uh, backlash in regards to um, putting a decapitated head on. <laughs> well, I don't know. That's maybe a little extra saying decap, but hell, it is detached. So <laughs> yeah, don't have no tail anyway. and ass attached yeah, to it. It's just a head. Yeah. No problem. yeah. <laughs> I guess if it was the whole thing wrapped around her, you know, it, maybe it wouldn't be. So, I don't know. God, it's, it's a fool. But yeah, uh, I guess hopefully their collection does very well. As well, we'll wait and see. Yeah. <laughs> so let's, let's go ahead and segue. Um, I had said this before on, I think, my podcast last week that I feel like a lot of podcasts, especially ones that are very hip hop related, they always end up getting overtly sexual. It's just like they just can't have a regular conversation without sex somehow, you know, creeping into the conversation. Now, recently, Um, Kevin Gates did an interview. He was on a podcast and the girl just comes out of nowhere and asks him, you know, how big his penis. And then he proceeds to start talking about his little brother and and how his little brother has an 18 inch penis. And I just thought that was just so crazy. Hmm. It's like these podcasts between Carisha admitting to liking golden showers. It's like everybody's trying to take it up one step further. So I want to go ahead and play you um, the conversation that was had here with um kevin gates uh can how many inches is your i don't know but it's decent it's decent and i say that because i really i really used to think i had a small because my little brother i hate to say this he gonna kill my little brother like 18 inches damn so i used to think my small but i'm you know i'm blessed i'm a ruler but 18 inches yeah but I, you know, you know, we, you know, when you young, you, you know, when yeah. you young, all y'all, y'all grow up. Everybody in the same house, y'all grow up f- together. You know what right. I'm saying? All right, honey. What the fuck? <laughs> oh, Her initial reaction was uh was very kind of the same thing I thought after I was kind of tilting my head to the to the side. Yo, what's up? Baby, let's go. Hey, tea sippers! To listen to the rest of this podcast, please go to Apple Podcasts. Spotify, Google Play, Stitcher, Tuned In, or AnchorFM.com, which is a free podcasting site. Thank you guys so much for the support, and stay tuned for the next video.